You like your participation trophy, Johnny. And when I think of Shiva, I think of like ice and, and cold and, and, and dark. So I like Shiva. Um, So when you're doing that, make sure you're using our separating yin yang. So back. Then I did my back. You're nothing. You go. <laughs> Centered. Taiji philosophy. Center yourself and keep your weight under you. Sometimes. <laughs> Welcome to episode three of my striking series. We are still working on the front leg taekwondo uh, roundhouse. And for some of the progression that we've been going through, I hope you really start at uh, episode one of this and make sure that you're able to understand the progression, especially if you're new to Taekwondo or, or new to striking in general, um, these roundhouse uh, principles can apply to multiple disciplines. So um, in the Taekwondo, we'll just go over quickly. Oh, let us not forget to bow, bow to our, our new friend. Um, I'm so happy and excited that I got to be blessed to have this hanging bag and this hanging bag has been invaluable invaluable now i can do these things without anyone i can do these all by myself but with that being said we're still trying to come up with a name for our our new friend and i've heard a couple couple suggestions uh so far i think um make sure you comment below some new name suggestions but i think so far we got shiva shiva i, I like shiva because that's kind of related to yoga um and when I think of Shiva, I think of like ice and, and cold and, and, and dark. So I like Shiva. Uh, Tony, Tony suggested we do summer sausage. And she suggested that because when you look at the bag, it looks like summer sausage. Being that we're from Milwaukee, we have, a, we have Usingers, Clements, and they make uh, summer sausage, which is, looks kind of like this. So I can see that. Um, there are a few other names, but those are the ones that stick out in my mind right now. But please make sure you comment below some cool names for a hanging bag. I'm going to consider everything. It's going to take um, a little while to decide on a name, but I think that's a good, something that's kind of fun to do. So, getting back to the episode. Front leg, taekwondo roundhouse, or just striking in general. When we're doing this, we're making sure that we have to start with a good stance. Uh, we're using Taiji principles uh, where we're making sure that our alignment is nice and nice and straight. So when we're here, uh, one of the key things you have to learn is your bounce. You have to learn how to bounce. And so if your opponent, they're moving, you have to be able to move, move with them. So having a good bounce is good. Uh, you really got to work on jump rope, footwork, skipping. I love skipping, so that all helps with footwork. So if you're new to Taekwondo, We'll just go over a few of those principles that I talked about in episode one. Front leg roundhouse, right there. You gotta make sure that you turn that hip over, turn the hip over because you wanna make solid contact. And then the other key, so when you're doing that, make sure you're using our separating yin yang. So back, do you see how I did that? It's very subtle. And when you're bouncing, it's, it's fast. They can barely see it. So shift, back foot, slow down. And so that's, that's the progression. Next, we also talked about your opponent moving. So you have to be able to chase them. And a lot of times that front leg roundhouse is used as a feeler. I'm feeling out the opponent. So that roundhouse is not gonna make contact. So you get a good bounce. And you don't wanna commit fully to the roundhouse. It's just a feeler because your opponent's gonna uh, move you're trying to fit in with their movement, go through the path of least resistance to get that, score that point. So what that looks like here, ah. switch up your timing. Ah. 
And the scoring areas, remember, score here, score here, score here. If you hit back here, that's not going to score. So you really have to learn your angles, being able to adjust your weight to fit in with the angle of your opponent and the hogu so you can be in the best position to score. Uh, moving up with this thought, after you make contact, you have to be able to recover and make sure that you're putting your guard up. That's very important. Now, for episode three, I really wanted to talk about using that front leg roundhouse as a diversion and then also being to move backwards with it. So we talked about going forward and going forward, you don't always have to step and then do it. You can do the two step in, the two step roundhouse, like that. Two step jump in roundhouse. So it's not just, uh, I like to do the, the step in or the fake. I feel like I can get a little more pressure. It's hard to score on electric hogus. If you don't have a front strong leg roundhouse, you are not going to be able to score. You need to make good, solid contact to get that point. So, I really like the front leg roundhouse. That's why I'm doing a whole series on it. But, episode three, now, we taught, in episode two, we taught you how to move forward that, with that front leg roundhouse. Now, we're going to move backwards. So, when you're moving backwards with that roundhouse, this is a counter. This is a really good counter move. When your opponents come in, you step back and then get that front leg roundhouse. You have to be able to get through their guard though. Your opponent, when they come in, they're gonna probably have their guard up. So you gotta choose the correct angle. Correct angle, it's all about angles too. So let's say our friend here is moving at all crazy angles. Let's make this as real as possible. What this looks like, we're doing a step back lead leg roundhouse. So I fit in, I'm timing him, timing him. He comes in, that is a pretty good opportunity to score. And make sure when you're doing that, you got your guard up, you're ready for your next move, so you have to keep that bounce. You can't just do that and then stand still. Make sure after you make contact, or even if you don't make contact, your body's centered. Taiji philosophy, center yourself. And keep your weight under you. Sometimes people overextend and then they can get off balance. That's when your opponent's going to score on you if they're good. So, episode three, step back, lead leg roundhouse. Got to time up, time up, get your guard up. Okay, they're coming in. Bounce, get ready. Always oh, weird angles here. So, I can score on the side. I just scored on the side. Think about this side too. Go here, step back. Ah. Let's try from this side. So, we're fitting in with our opponent's movement. We got our alignment, good bounce. No judging your distance, that's good. Pick the correct angle. Step back. We can score on the side here, front. Let's try this side. Okay, our opponent's moving all crazy here. <laughs> Where are you going? Correct, pick the correct angle. So. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Okay, he did a good job. So, episode three, we're expanding upon episode one and two, knowing your distance, knowing how to shift your weight, how to stay centered, bring that front leg up, boom, add the bounce, fake, feeler, that's how it come in, and you can do this with the air too. You don't need a, a I realize not everyone has a hanging heavy bag. I'm very lucky and blessed to have them. So you can just kick the air. You can practice with the air. Make sure your guard's up here, bounce. Switch up timing. Faint. Uh, episode three, we're stepping back now. 
Exhale three, we're stepping back. Still doing that front leg uh, lead roundhouse. So yeah, I think he's had enough. So uh, episode three, thank you very much. Anya Haseo. Make sure we're commenting suggestions on our friend's name. Um, hope this was helpful. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Thank you very much. Inshallah.